Ooh, baby, just a bit over 5,600 pounds, the 235S Super Slide Direct Entertainment Camp Kitchen Extravaganza Rockwood Hybrid here at Halid RV. And I swear with this one, it's like everybody knows it's a hybrid except the camper itself. Because other than just the front rear beds, nothing about this reads hybrid. First of all, let's hear it for the boys with that big outside camp kitchen mounted right under the awning so you can have some anytime cooking. Not to mention just all the good Rockwood things. Like this thing has amazing kitchen space. It has really good storage, a super slide for plenty of space. It's a camper that could be good for an individual, a couple, a family. Like it's super multi-flexible. And I love the fact that it's one that actually has a decent living room because that's just not something hybrids are known to have. The Rockwood Roo series, if you didn't know, by the way, is now a double Asdell product. The sidewalls, the front, the rear walls, they are all Asdell, inside and out. They use no wood product in those walls whatsoever. That is a really cool uh, factor for helping keep the weight in check, some peace of mind, some longevity. It all, uh, all the other Rockwood things like the, the bigger vent fan, the nicer bathroom, the tire pressure monitoring system, their best in class suspension, it just goes on. And this is what I'm so jazzed up about. It has this big super slide, like a fifth wheel in this little hybrid camper. And I get that that adds some weight to it. I could certainly find you a lighter weight trailer, but with this living space, a camp kitchen, this storage overall, the, the, the normal inside kitchen, hard pressed to beat what they got going on here. Uh, if you notice, one of the real signature calling cards of this floor plan is that outside camp kitchen. But what that did on the inside, directly across, like behind the camp kitchen is actually the fireplace and the entertainment center that we're looking at right here. And it gives you a direct view right on to boardwalk and park place. I'm going to get all the cabinetry opened up in just a minute to show you everything. Uh, real quick stop up front. Both the front and rear hybrid beds are 60 by 80 true queens, by the way. So a bigger, taller person like me can fit on there. A couple other cool things. This RV, I'm going to talk about its solar and inverter package in a minute. And the, the, the button on the right-hand side, that's what you activate the inverter with. There's USB plugs below. And that outlet, you'll actually see several outlets throughout this RV uh, that would be listed as inverter ready right there. So how well does that solar package work that comes with the fridge? Check this out. I stepped outside so we can do this all in real time. The RV is plugged into nothing. We're in the middle of the driveway. You can see the battery box is sitting there wide open. All the wires are hanging right out. And just to make sure there's no magic razzle dazzle, I even left my handy dandy battery box over here in plain sight where you could see it. So what are we gonna see inside? Normally, when this is the case in an RV, you see nothing. But if you look right here, the charge controller is live providing 10.5, 10.4 volts right now. And uh, just to give you an idea, I mean, there's no clear direct line to the sun currently. It is all cloudy and overcast. But the way that this stuff works is uh, even with some overhead like cloudy coverage, you're still getting some juice in. Actually, frankly, a pretty fair amount. That big 190 watt extra large panel is really helping us. And look at this. All of our low power 12 volt systems, like I had to turn the stereo off so I didn't get a YouTube strike, you know, for copyright infringement on music that I don't own. Please don't sue me. Uh, but the, the lights, the fans, the stereo, your simple 12 volt stuff is all still working. Now, if I went to hit the slide out, which is a 12 volt appliance, uh, basically, I would need to uh, definitely have a little more juice and battery on there. But it gives you an idea of how much juice this is actually bringing in and the level of functionality it can bring you. So now imagine you're using this as a battery tender to keep things alive. You're going to be off grid for a while. The battery is not really needing to be used. Excess energy on a nice sunny day would be coming in to recharge the battery. And these refrigerators only draw three or four amps once they're down to like cruising temp, altitude, whatever you want to call it. That factory solar package on this is no joke. And if you wanted to, you could add a second 190 watt panel for 380 total watts. And now imagine how much extra juice you got coming in. That's pretty awesome. That's a cool thing Rockwood is doing so that if you are on battery power alone and you want to do things like run that heated 
uh, bed because their hybrid mattresses are heated in Rockwoods, which is cool. It's optional. They're from some brands. There's some brands that don't even option it or uh, offer it optionally. You know, everything they do is a step above. Like little details like this. They've always had these bunk light fan jobs, but they moved the power hookup point out of the way a little bit from its initial position when this model first came out, so that it's you know you don't have this like stringy line dangling clear across your uh, you know your TV viewing angle. Everything they do just makes so much more sense. There's two of those bunk light fan jobs, by the way. I've never found a cute little nerdism for those. It's just an awkward thing to say, bunk light fan. But that's exactly what it is. But speaking of nerdisms, <laughs> one time, as a joke, I called that little cargo net over there a baby hammock. And boy, the internet le never let me forget that. <laughs> Obviously... It's not a baby hammock. But we have people like a uh, super awesome viewer, Mr. David Weidman, who just every single time I post something, he's like, yes, but what about the Montana with the baby hammock? So uh, it never change. I'm not complaining, by the way. I think it's just as funny as you do. I don't know if everybody else cares that I spent two minutes talking about baby hammocks, but hey, I think it's hilarious. Um, <laughs> direct facing entertainment right here with our Bluetooth DVD stereo down below that and an electric space heating fireplace in a hybrid camper. Are you kidding me? Now, something else I wanted to show you is during the day, you know, you've got the super slide for all the seating, but during the day, you can actually flip the mattress back and there's actually a cushioned seating bench right there. And that runs over the top of a full pass-through storage compartment. Again, we will see that later in just a minute. First, uh, I just want to give you a good look around. If we look actually above the television, you see a, uh, a second, because you'll see another one. I guess this would be the first, because we'll see the second one in it. But basically, this RV has two of those big XL vent fans. And uh, how well do those things work? Basically, they'll all but suck the hair off your head. Told you. But as good as the entertainment center is, and all joking aside, the kitchen's no joke either on this one. Um, I will always try to shoot you straight. It is, I would say, limited in countertop prep space. But remember, this one really expects you to spend some time doing a lot of your, uh, your cooking and your prep work outdoors. Uh, so I think they did what they could. What I love, though, is how they pack this thing with just an incredible amount of storage. Uh, before we get there, though, real quick, as I'm tripping over things behind me, <laughs> take a look at the dinette. This can fold down into a sleeper if need be. Obviously, the little sofa can as well. We will take a second brief look at that in a minute. We'll actually close the slides and show you everything in travel mode. But for now, all that storage. And we're actually going to start over here in your first of three potential pantries. This one is flex use because you see those handy little drunken octopus coat hangers in there. If you don't know why I call them that, look at this thing and tell me it doesn't look like an octopus. I had one too many on a Friday night looking for a fight, brother. Anyway, ooh, uh, am I just forgetting or am I drunk? I don't remember there being a handy shoe garage down there by the door. Don't answer the drunk part. I don't think my boss would appreciate the real answer to that. Anyway, <coughs> moving on. The uh, dinette over here. One of the nice things Rockwood does, even on their hybrids here, is they have one of the best dining arrangements I've ever seen. That free floating, folding leg, elliptical base type table. That's a lot of words. But basically, it means you can do anything you want with it. You could make it like a, a dining table in front of the sofa. You could use it outside for picnic time if you're so inclined. By the way, what we're looking at right there is the other bunk light fan. But notice how Rockwood's giving us drawers, not just doors below the dinette, and the entire skeleton of the dinette, like the rest of the camper, is an all aluminum skeleton. Anything Rockwood builds in-house is going to have an aluminum skeleton below it. This sofa, by the way, is a handy storage chest, and uh, I'll, I'll mention it again later, but an outside access door. So if you want that to be outside storage, because this camper admittedly has very little it's a great handy little spot. Still giving us cabinets over the sofa here. That's something that even Rockwood has phased out in some of their bigger models. And personally, I I just I have a hard time ever peeling storage out of an RV. I think it is such a valuable valuable item. Uh, there's that pass-through storage. You'll see that again from outside. That can pass through from the exterior as well. And last year, when we first saw this, I showed you uh, uh, what I first called pantry tainment storage. But then I noticed it has hanging closet storage space in here as well. And I said, hey, cool folks at home, my regular Halet Nation viewers, the, the members of the RV nerd herd, what do we want to call that? Let's make up a new nerdism. And uh, I, I forgot. I forgot it because that was like a year ago and I've slept since then. 
<laughs> uh, for now, I'm going to call it the closet, pantry, closet, behind the entertainment center. I, I don't know. I'm still not in love with that name. Let's see if we can come up with a newer, better name for that, shall we? Now, that could be pantry number two, but next to the refrigerator... That is an all-time, don't care what you do with it, that right there is an amazing pantry space. Now, what we're looking at today, normally this RV would have an 8-cubic-foot two-way gas electric fridge freezer. We are looking at the 10.7-cubic-foot larger, faster cooling, travel-friendly, and safe DC compressor fridge. But here is an amazing thing with Rockwood. When you get the 12-volt fridge, you automatically get their 190-watt solar package and 1,000-watt inverter. And I mean, how great is that, right? This is all pocket-screwed cabinetry, by the way. I, I realized I interrupted my storage pass-through. I want to make sure you see that. But, and as long as I'm doing that, I want to get you a good look here at the control panel. So they give you physical switches, but if you want to, you can scan that little QR code with your phone, um, get the uh, LCI One Control app, and you will sync that control panel to your phone, not to mention the fact that this has the handy-dandy Wi-Fi Ranger, which is basically like a built-in router for your camper. Sealed edge press membrane counter, stainless sink, just detailed, detailed all the way. And that passes through down there, by the way. How nice is that? And a bigger oven! First of all, a lot of hybrids don't give you any oven. Rockwood, meanwhile, is giving us a larger 22-inch oven versus the smaller 16s. Uh, that some don't even come with a 16 again. Uh, so you can actually do some real cooking in here. You know, it's just it's those amazing little details they're doing. And by the way, like I said, if you want to, you can rearrange things a little bit. You could pull that table out for picnic time. You could make it like, uh, you know, if you want to eat directly across from the TV. I know I tend to do that too much at home. Uh, although lately here we have gotten back around the dining table. Family time's important, you know. If you've got kids, I'm not trying to tell you how you live your life. I'm telling you, though, it is nice to, to gather around the dining table and try to talk to each other for a little bit. Do some face-to-face -face time. <laughs> By the way, these are uh, those two-segment, like, blue-white reading lights, where if you just tap it, we get the blue. If we hold it, we get spotlight reading, and there's handy-dandy 12-volt chargers up there for your USB plugs. Well, they're not 12-volt. They're USB chargers. They probably give you about five or... Anyway, my point is, they work off the battery, which means they work off the solar. Ooh. Sorry. Had myself a bit of an apostrophe there. Don't, don't you mean epiphany? Whatever. Closing her back down here. Something I forgot to talk about. Up top, centralized air conditioning. In this, even though it's basically one room, they still centralize the air. And notice how they're doing double AC runs through this to really maximize that airflow. Plus, each vent can close and turn individually. And we will build these as many times as we can at Halo RV with a larger 15,000 BTU Coleman Quiet Air Conditioner, just in case you were curious. Now, again, the rear bed, the front bed, they have the same treatments. There's no whichever one is the primary is the one you decide is the primary. But uh, I thought I'd keep the. Uh, you know, baby hammock. I think the name's going to stick, unfortunately. I uh, thought I'd keep that down. By the way, you notice how there's that extra flap up there? Handy little, like, phone pocket and stuff. And if I twist you ever so carefully around the corner, pardon the uh, new RV arrival packaging I usually try to tuck away for you. Little TV hookup even here. So, uh, you know, you can have different things going in different places of the RV. Frankly, you've got outside, forward, back. You've got, like, three separate entertainment zones in this. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Full viewing window in the entry door, pretty cool. Porcelain f flush toilet, pretty cool. And in case you're curious about leg room, I ain't gonna tell you it's the biggest bathroom I've ever been in, but at my size, I fit pretty decently. I didn't feel super duper cramped in there. Um, that, by the way, another one of those handy inverted outlets. Big sink, holy crap, that's a big sink in there. Full medicine cabinet, not just a mirror glued against the wall. And I, I would have called this the first, but I guess this is the second of those big XL vent fans. Plus, they both have the roof vent cover standard from the factory. Some good bathroom storage here as well. That's something Rockwood has always done well. They've always had good bathroom storage. And pardon my foot for holding that open. Um, the camper's not level and the door keeps wanting to shut on me. Because that's what those hidden hinges do. They make the door want to shut. The, uh, the radius shower over here. It's not the biggest, most giant-ish shower. I understand that it won't fit some people, but it is, I think, the biggest and the best they could do within the size confines that they have available here. If I had to, I mean, again, I could fit into it. I had decent headroom in here. My head's in the bubble 
a little bit, but there's the little Rockwood touches too. Like the sh uh, the shower caddy, place to actually keep your body washes and stuff. I would say hair care products, but I don't need those. And the shower miser system. The Rockwood Rue was the first non-Geo Pro Rockwood to get that system. So if you are boondocking, which I know people tend to do more often with uh, hybrid campers, you can uh, avoid wasting any of that fresh water uh, when at all possible. So, I think I've... I think I've beaten this horse to death enough. Let's close the slide, shall we? <laughs> now, quick look here with the slide closed. One of the cool things about the way that we have this set up with the dinette and the uh, bifold sofa is that if you are traveling and you uh, get to some place and you can't open the beds at night, you can still fold these down. A tri-fold sleeper sofa going to be a little bit too big. You're not going to be able to get through there. Obviously, this is going to give us easy access to basically almost everything in this RV. There's very little you're going to lose when it's closed. And about the only one of those things would actually be the uh, the storage behind the slide right here. Remember, there was that like pantry, closet space, whatever behind the slide. That's the only thing you're really going to lose in transit because kitchen, bathroom access, you know, overnight uh, super slide sleeping, you can maintain use of those spaces here. And if you appreciate the fact that we take the extra time to show you the RVs with the slides closed, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Follow along with us here at Halo RV. We're always doing our best to give you the most information possible. And like I mentioned when we first began our little adventure here together, what probably feels like an eternity ago if you've actually been listening to me, highly recommend you hit the mute button and you speed the video up when you watch me. <laughs> at least that's how my wife says she does it. <laughs> But what I was getting at is that the Rockwood Rue, like the Mini Light, like the Geo Pro, is now a double Asdell product. So the side walls, the front wall, the rear wall, they're not using Luon in the wall construction. They're using Asdell composite materials. If you're not familiar with Asdell, it has a whole laundry list of great qualities. The biggest things about it, though, is that it's, it's the material itself is water proof it's immune to water breakdown it's basically a plastic so it doesn't deteriorate like wood can if exposed to water that being said there is no greater cure for the well no better factor for the longevity of your rv than personal care maintenance and upkeep that is something that you just cannot sacrifice a little tv mount over here and remember this is all encompassed under that big power awning led lighting all that good stuff you've got an outdoor griddle station because that's basically something all rockwoods do that's rockwood doing rockwood things right there it has a propane quick connect for that and then a second separate propane quick connect for the burner stove top over here so what you can do as you can cook the main dishes and the sides all at the same time outside of the RV so you're not adding extra heat and humidity into the camper. And we've got that rolled steel countertop right there and a big outside fridge. That is, this is what I think qualifies as a big camp kitchen. What do you guys think of that? Because some people come and say, I want a big camp kitchen, not a small one. I think that qualifies, the big fridge, don't you? That handy outlet right there. And in case you're curious, this is one of the outlets that if the Rockwood you're looking at is uh, equipped with an inverter from that solar package, that one would be wired to the inverter. By the way, I didn't talk about this inside, but like, you see the nice hidden hinges, but notice how it still has a raised panel hardwood door. Rockwood still does hardwood door inserts here with this uh, Newport Ash, but they flip them backwards to give it that kind of residential shaker style. So they're they're always doing more than you realize, like the nicer metallic slam latches on the baggage door, everything. Notice too how they ran the awning past the camp kitchen. A lot of manufacturers won't do that. They'll say, oh, no, 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 no. The camp kitchen door, you can stand under that. That counts as coverage. Rockwood's like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> but for the best reason. So we've got the roof solar package. These are always roof solar prepped, but you still have a simple side mount solar prep plug in case you want to add a portable panel to chase the sun and park in the shade. That's the storage under that front bench right there in case you were curious. All LED tail and marker lights, easy reach, easy reach uh, latches here for our bed ends. And they have their own little, uh, let me get that up here, key lock, by the way. And Rockwood has adopted uh, something jaco has been doing for a few years, a key-like system, so that basically you only need one key to open just about everything on the RV. I think the outside shower is the only thing that has its own separate key. Um, the uh, RV that we're looking at right now has the optional exterior white skin package. Normally you'd have a, uh, uh, a tan package with like dark chocolate kind of accents. This gives us the nice white and gray. And I tell you, I don't know what it is. It gives it such a modern look. It looks and feels to me 
way higher class. This really speaks to me, but I'd love your info. What do you guys, do you prefer the white skin, the brown skin, uh, Rockwoods? Like, which one is your favorite? I don't, champagne, whatever color you want to call it. I don't care. The slide awning, that's another optional piece of equipment that we've added here onto this Rockwood. And you see that antenna sticking up there. By the way, that is the Wi-Fi Ranger. Uh, you, you don't see just the separate Wi-Fi Ranger router looking thing on the roof anymore. It's all kind of integrated into the TV antenna. So there's one less thing that requires ceiling up there on the roof. Now we are <laughs> way too close to this eagle for my fat butt to squeeze through here. What I do want to show you though is that, um, the uh, behind the sofa over here, there is a little bit of storage access. It's just those little touches Rockwood always does and even that has a magnet hold back on it. Good job Rockwood. Thought I'd spare you the long walk around the camper like Frodo taking the one ring back to Mordor and Mount Doom. Although, admittedly, much, much shorter and less dramatic. Anyone else ever notice how the Lord of the Rings extended cut movies are the only things that are actually longer than the book upon which they're based? <laughs> Sorry, I'm a nerd. Anyway factory standard 300 pound accessory hitch back here that way if you want to add some things like some bike racks uh you know without voiding rv warranties they build in a way for you to do that and something else to remember this is a, a two bed hybrid but what if there's only one of you or a couple you don't have to use both beds you can say the front bed or the rear bed is your primary bed you can only put the other one down when you need it like there's no one way that you have to use these you can really pick and choose how you want to do it but I also want to make you aware of a couple other cool things with Rockwood. When you get the triple step, you get a little nicety bonus feature. You get what I like to call the scrubbing bubble stable steps. They do the work so you don't have to. Basically a gas strut system like a luxury fifth wheel does all the lifting for you. And by the way, standard Goodyear endurance radials with factory included tire pressure monitoring. So you're already getting the best tire available in this class and then you're getting more peace of mind by virtue of the fact that they give you a tire pressure monitoring system so when you're zipping down the road you can make sure you don't have a low pressure situation about to cause a flat or a blowout you can proactively identify that and stay safe stay on the road everything rockwood does is a cut above now remember that camp kitchen remember all that stuff that we had hanging off the side of the camper over here look how nicely it can all stow away you don't have to eat up your in a hybrid you have very limited uh, cargo space that's why i wanted to show you that pass-through compartment up front there even with the box for the griddle here so that we're we're actually burning more space than we need everything just fits in here nicely you can have all your picnic stuff in one spot all your inside stuff inside you don't have to get too creative with your storage here so if you're looking to cook up some trouble, <laughs> dad, dad, bad joke. Is there anything as a good dad joke? Aren't they all dad, bad jokes? Isn't that why they rhyme? Regardless, if you like what you see here, leave us a couple comments. Say, hey, I like this about it. I don't like that. I have a question. Uh, whatever the case may be, let me know and I'll do my best to fill in the blanks. And as always, when you are ready, we really appreciate the opportunity to earn your business here at our family owned and operated facility. Uh, we've been here since 1989. We don't do those annoying hidden dealer fees, but we do everything else. So if you appreciate all the extra effort and information that we give you in our admittedly long winded video tours, click that subscribe button and follow along. Pardon my Michigan mittens over here. It is pretty darn chilly today. I'm going to get my head socked back on and get into ninja mode over here we're short of that take care stay safe have fun and thank you for watching everyone really appreciate it told you